Hello there, how are you doing today? Today is a special day because Fedora 27 has been released and I have kind of a different emotional relationship with Fedora because Fedora was the first Linux distribution that I was exposed to and uh, it, it was fun. It was Fedora Core 405 or whatever it was back then and it has come a long way now and Fedora is uh, a very popular distribution when it comes to uh, those developers who want access to latest and greatest applications because Fedora is like cutting edge. It's also a distribution uh, that kind of introduces new GNOME technologies to users whether it was uh, software or boxes or uh, uh, integration with Google Drive and uh, a lot of other things that the GNOME community has been doing. And uh, Linux Torvalds himself uses Fedora so it's a special distribution. Uh, so what's new in Fedora 27? Well, uh, it, it depends on who you are because if you are aware Fedora community has kind of split this distribution into three uh, editions. One is uh, Fedora Workstation which is desktop. Then there is Fedora Atomic Host which is also upstream for Red Hat Atomic Host and that is targeted at uh, containerized workloads you know where you run containers and the third is uh, Fedora server which as the name implies is meant to run as a server and I think that's a good approach because uh, now each version is optimized so you don't get the bloat uh, of you know everything pre-installed and pre-configured or at the same time you don't have to install packages depending on your use case now when you install workstation you know that everything that you need on a desktop is there or when you install server you know all those tools and utilities are there and same is the case with the, the host however with this release only atomic host and workstation was is released uh, for some reasons uh, there is delay in the release of fedora server edition so that will come later and i don't think you would really use Fedora Server Edition. It's more or less like upstream for RHEL, I guess. And uh, most people who want to run, you know, free of cost RHEL clone, they would be running CentOS either way. So here my focus is on uh, workstation as usual. Fedora used to be unstable, I think around version 18, but I think especially I had a lot of problems because I was using Nvidia cards but uh, these days I use Dell XPS 13 and Dell uh, all-in-one it is I think 5720 uh, and uh, I, I have no problem whatsoever running Fedora or any other distributions on these systems and, uh, and over time Fedora has become really stable so I think since uh, the release of 22 it has been extremely uh, stable if I'm not wrong about the version number and I used Fedora, you know, from time to time. I never used it as my primary distribution. And uh, it's, it's not about Fedora, but I think in those days I needed access to a lot of third party applications. And there was still uh, a lot of work to be done between, I think, RPM Meet, Fresh RPM. Now things are better because of RPM Fusion, because there were like merger of a couple of repositories. So you get everything in the, in the same place. So you do have a better experience on Fedora. And as I said, uh, I do run it in my virtual machine to keep an eye on what's happening in the GNOME world. Uh, but this is really an impressive release. Um, only thing that I feel with Fedora is that they offer way to vanilla GNOME experience. But I th don't think that's actually uh, anything uh, wrong because most of the GNOME work is kind of comes from Red Hat and Fedora community though everyone else contributes equally but uh, uh, GNOME is mostly seen as you know kind of you know so uh, Fedora is a um, uh, kind of GNOME distribution that's why Fedora introduces a lot of you know GNOME technologies when they are new uh, so offering vanilla GNOME experience is actually not surprising because you know these are the same developers who are working on that release so there is nothing to add or patch like in case of uh, Ubuntu or OpenSUSE or any other distribution, you see a lot of you know uh, um, modification in terms of better integration or theming and things like that happen, which you won't see in Fedora. You get the pure vanilla GNOME experience. So what is new in this release? Well, honestly speaking, uh, from, from Fedora's side of uh, stuff, 
other than the new GCC libraries and new RPM version 4.14, uh, the, the actual highlight of this release is GNOME 3.26 or 3.26, which is the latest release of GNOME. So all the goodies uh, of GNOME were that you will find in this release because uh, one of the problem with the Linux uh, desktop Linux community is that it takes so long for uh, packages to find its way into the repositories or you know to be made available which should not be the case because it's all open source so you can install integrating packages when they're still being built anyway that's not the point of this video so with this release you know you get you know very good gnome experience as i'm running it on my dell xps uh, and one thing I must note, if you have seen my Ubuntu uh, video, you must have seen that I had some issues with the, with the scaling. But here, uh, the, the experience is much better than what was there on Ubuntu. Uh, still, I wish there was more scaling options, but uh, when I you know, drop the screen resolution, uh, I, it doesn't suddenly go to 1080p. You know? So that's, that's good. Let's see what are the screen resolution options so that I am more specific about what I'm telling you. So right now I'm running this uh, Dell XPS all-in-one at 2880 by 1620 resolution, which at 100% scaling, which is not bad at all. Um, uh, beyond that, some of the cool features that you would find is uh, one is that uh, there is now new uh, system settings. I have mixed feelings about it because it reminds me of kind of the system settings that you see on a mobile phone or a smartphone like on iPhone or Android where you have the list there. And it makes more sense to show the, that list on mobile phone because, it, it, I mean, you can show icons also, but you know, it's very easy because there's, there's less space. But on desktop, I would have preferred the, <coughs> sorry, the good, let me open it so I can actually tell you what do I see there, settings. Uh, so I would prefer the good old uh, way where you see all the icons in one place, uh, especially the icons which are uh, used often. Uh, so if you look at the older GNOME or if you look at, uh, I would give the example of Mac OS, you have one system preference uh, window and then you there you get access to all the core settings like uh, like display, uh, Bluetooth, uh, sound, dis um, security, user and all those things, you know, just one window and you get access to those 10 of 20 whatever core features are there and then you can access more from the dock. Here, uh, it's kind of, um, not, I mean, I, I don't, personally, I don't like it because there's a list and then, you know, when you click on the list, it shows you more description. Why? And the most annoying thing was that there was no settings for display and I don't know where it was because there's, it's not very easy. There's no, uh, I mean, it's not very intuitive. So I, I, I kind of struggled for a while and then I found it because it was actually buried, even it was not on top, it was buried you had on the page too. So I had to go to devices and that's where it was printer, keyboard, mouse and touchpad and display. Why? I mean, I would have kind of preferred that there was just, you know, and kind of icon set with all the main features that people often use. But um, that's the decision they have made and that's fine, no problem. Uh, other than that, uh, what else is new is uh, that uh, they now offer synchronization with browser. So uh, they're using Firefox things. So now you can, if you have passwords and bookmarks and uh, all those history and other stuff, then you can easily synchronize with your desktop. Uh, what else is there? I mean, whatever the good things that you see in GNOME 3.26 is there. Oh yeah, it, it also comes with emoji now so you can have that talking turd or talking monkey and all those things oh no 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 i'm sorry that's for ios 11 uh since gnome developers kind of follow the ios releases and the, their their the design so closely that i get confused often no they with this uh, release uh, they have uh, included support for uh, not any emoji but emoji uh, so you can insert emoji into chats, messages, and documents. 
The only problem is that there is no easy way. On Mac, you know, oh, there are like short key, you know, when I click on that command and space, I guess, and then I get the whole list of uh, emojis that I can easily insert in the documents. Here, I have not seen any, as I, once again, as I said, if I'm a new user, if you throw, it, throw me at Fedora, I won't know how to insert emojis. And literally, since it just released a few hours ago, I have not played that much to figure out how to insert emojis in documents. Uh, but those are the core features. Other than that, uh, as I said, you know, everything that is new in GNOME is new there. So the, the, the question is, who is Fedora for? I mean, is it for you and me or, I mean, it depends who you and me are. I'm a writer, you know, I, uh, I love technology. I play with Linux, I play with Mac OS, I play with Windows, Android, iOS, whatever, BSD, whatever you talk, you know, name, I, I, I play with that. Uh, so I'm a tech enthusiast. I will play with everything, but uh, you could be an average user, you know, who just wants to use computer to get the work done. You could be a developer. You could be a sysadmin. You could be a professional, um, like you know, filmmaker or whatever. So who is it for? I mean, I think after RPM Fusion has happened, it's quite easy to get access to latest uh, applications or you know to get. Uh, access to uh, you know very huge repo repository of applications so it is very good for average users but i don't think that is the target audience uh, the target audience for fedora is i think mostly developers uh, who want access to bleeding or cutting edge technologies uh, so that they can keep an eye on where the linux community is heading and people are linux tour well to so know who wants access to new libraries and all those things but you can use fedora on your uh, system i think the only problem with fedora is that uh, the upgrade upgrade path for one release to another release could be challenging i guess i think it's not as smooth and personally i am huge fan of rolling releases that's why i run r linux and uh, open suzy tumblebead uh, because i really don't like the idea of you know upgrading my system from scratch every six months or every year i i, I just really don't like it uh, even on my mac OS, you know it's it's very easy you know, when the upgrade comes in like 20 minutes or 30 minutes and it's installed i don't have to lose any data or make any backup and things are good i'm not a huge fan of windows in that department but uh, uh, other than that uh, that is good but that said, uh, as I said, Fedora is a very good distribution for uh, new users. As I said, you know, you can use RPM Fusion. It's very good for developers and all those people. And um, just um, if you are somebody who wants to keep an eye on what is the latest and greatest happening in the Linux world, this is the perfect distribution to hang out uh, at. So uh, download it, give it a try, and let me know what you think about it. And thanks for watching and subscribe to this channel. See you next time. Bye for now.